Hey guys, it's Adam. I want to take a moment and personally thank you for listening to our shows, for downloading our shows, and for sharing them with your friends. With your guys' support, we just moved the Twisted 10 into the threshold of the top 100 comedy shows in iTunes. It made it to number 99. Granted, just barely crept in there. However, that's still monumental for us. Out of the tens of thousands of podcasts that are out there, that's one of the most difficult categories to breach into. Thank you very, very much for helping us to get there. If you haven't already done so, please go give us a five-star rating and give us a review, a short little one-line, two-line review, letting us know that you enjoy the show. iTunes reviews are like podcast currency. It legitifies the show, it allows us to get better guests, and it allows our sponsors to really see that we're reaching the listeners that are out there. If you haven't done so yet, please go do it. We would greatly appreciate it. We've got a ton on the horizon from Dichotomy Media. Another podcast you're going to hear a little bit about during this episode. A lot more on our YouTube channel. More Get Out Penny cartoons. All sorts of stuff. So please help us by giving us that five-star rating and a little review. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 1, 2, 3, 4. You're listening to The Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique, post-created top ten lists, recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. Okay, and welcome to another... And I can't think of a good word. God man. damn it, Tech. You Sorry. had one job. I know. I can't. Okay. Welcome to another. I'm just going to say episode. Episode of the Twisted Ten. <laughs> uh, this episode? What's that? A piss episode? Piss episode. There we go. Wow. Episode. Episode. Welcome episode. to episode. another piss episode of the Twisted Ten. After Woo-hoo. this, can we have some piscetti? No. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, my name is Tack, and I am not one of the hosts today, Adam. Oh, neither am I. As a matter of fact, I am not a host this week either. You're not. No. So, again, again, again. It's supposed to be my week again, but no. No, of course oh, we not. We look to the Lady Chase. And this is not my show. Who are you? Not Andrea Joy's show. <laughs> and so it must be Jay. Uh, I am Jay Alvarez. Uh, I am also not hosting, because <laughs> uh, apparently we've got another uh, another guest. That's right. Shocking, uh, uh, Adam. Another fucking guest. I don't no, even know why up. we do this anymore. Wait why do we even show up? I didn't set this one up, though. You can't blame me for this one. <laughs> this is true. This is true. These uh, We do have some guest hosts. Plural, our second time Ooh. on the show where we actually have two guest, two guest hosts, um, and today we have the boys from Hysteria Fifty One podcast. Uh, we have uh, yeah. Mr. Brent Hand and John Goforth. Yes, two guests, the half the funny. So you're in luck. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have a pretty unique podcast. This is Adam. Uh, you guys have a pretty unique podcast. So I listened to a couple of episodes. Uh, the, I listened to the entire episode of the most recent one, which is part two of uh, what's the murderer? Jack yeah, the Jack Ripper. the Ripper. Thank yeah. you. Not to be uh, confused with Jack Tripper. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, not to be confused. <laughs> Come on, knock on my door. That cracked me up when I heard that on the episode. <laughs> or should he be confused with? It? <laughs> so uh, just tell a little bit of our listeners, like what your show is all about. Well, uh, Hysteria 51, we take a, uh, uh, I'd say, a skeptical look at the paranormal, the supernatural, the mysterious, and the unexplained. We're generally drinking during the show, and uh, like you mentioned, Brent's a host, I'm a host, and the third host, who's not with us tonight, is a cranky cranky robot that Brent built from old computer parts, car parts, named Conspiracy Bot, and he's bent on killing us, one, world domination, two, and putting out a good podcast, three, probably in that order. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Peppered in with lots of drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on his part. You guys, you guys are ridiculously quick-witted. I was listening to the show, and I mean, there's a ton of comedy Thanks, podcasts. I don't know what to say to that. Oh, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. It's, it's I'm impressive. blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Tack hosts another show called You're 40 Now What with a, a friend of ours named Ron and he's he's about the well I guess Jay is too he's pretty quick the the quick wittedness that you guys have is really appreciated by guys like that that can well maybe and girls too I don't know but that can come back with those funny puns that quick <laughs> and you guys are Punny, I appreciate punny, that. Punny. And you know what helps too? We've known each other for like 30 years. So uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I know all his jokes. I've heard them all. <laughs> so I know what he's going to say. And it's not usually. You uh, know, the other thing that helps? 
editing. Yeah. Lots and lots <laughs> of editing. <laughs> hey, remember that thing you said three days ago? I finally got a comeback. Can we record that? Yeah, just edit it in. Slip that one right in. <laughs> oh, nice. Hey, uh, also, uh, Brent, I don't know if anybody's told you this, but I've been noticing it since the very first episode I listened to. Are you aware that you're a voice twin to Kevin Smith? No, I've never been told that. Nobody's told you that? No. You sound oh my just God, like yes. I'm also a fat bastard, so like maybe we were switched at birth or something. I don't know. Or, or I got a twin out there, yeah. Twin separated at birth. You have a voice twin of Kevin Smith. You sound just like That's a good like point. Him. I didn't think about that until you said it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, now I can't hear anything but that. That's all I hear. I want to hear you talk about Batman for a half hour now. Maybe I should call his bank. Yeah, I'd like to make a withdrawal if I can. <laughs> you totally could. I want you to do a voicemail for me on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys say I sound like Jason Mewes, I am out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So for our listeners, if this is the first time you listen to the Twisted Ten, what we do here is we we create a top ten list, a unique top ten list. We don't steal it from the website from any website anywhere. Uh, we create a unique top ten list and we break it down. We put it into a hot pocket. And then we heat it up for about a minute forty two seconds. I this isn't kinky too, yet, by the way. I, I love tax expert. And then we <laughs> and then we take a bite of it, and then you run to the emergency room to create for you know, to treat for third degree burns. <laughs> and then we discuss it and we break it down and then we uh purge it back up and then eat it again. And then we I don't know, I'm I'm getting lost now. It's close enough. So then we break it down, we talk about the top ten list and we have a good time, and that's what we do here on the Twisted Ten. You got it. And occasionally guests. Can you 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 repeat that? I wasn't. I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. So what we do here. (laughs) (laughs) The The, hot pocket. Tack, this is where those edit skills come in. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's a good thing we do that. (laughs) Wink, wink. Wait a second. Um, Nobody said anything about homework here. What's going on? (laughs) (laughs) That's one thing that we've noticed with some of our guest hosts. Uh, after they said, yeah, we would love to be a, a guest host of the Twisted Ten, then they realized, of course, with your show, you guys know how much research goes into some of the topics you guys talk about, but uh, some of our guest hosts didn't know that it's a lot of work to find ten things in a particular category and then to expound on all of them. That's not an easy task, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's a very valid point, one that we're not terribly familiar with because we refuse to go past the first page of Google. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's another page? <laughs> well, and also our topic for this evening is going to be government conspiracies. And as you well know, it's hard to find 10 U.S. government conspiracies. I mean, they're on the up and up at all times. So <laughs> we had to do, our, do anything untoward. We had to do a lot of Internet sleuthing just to come up with 10 things that even anyone disagrees with with the government, <laughs> let alone conspiracies. <laughs> so what's the actual name of the list tonight? The name of the list tonight, Top 10 Government Related Conspiracies. Oh. U.S. government or world governments throughout the world? <laughs> so the government oh. is either purported to be or admittedly involved in each one of these. But is, is this like any government, any country or United U.S. States government? government? Now, I'm not saying that if other governments. you actually believe there's just one U.S. government. <laughs> 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 dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there's the New World Order. Long live the Lizard Kings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do they have our notes, Brent? What's I going know. on? <laughs> <laughs> I've already ticked off like three of our items. I'm right, a little so nervous. We wrote these notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are ready, take it away. I'm going to hand over the metaphorical keys, and you guys can feel free to take it away. All right. For, uh, for number 10... Number ten. ten. Numero ten. Yes. Ah, ah, ah. We are uh, we are going to start with. It was actually the topic of our very first episode. If you're going to listen, Hysteria Fifty One, I would not try that one as your first one. Nonetheless, it was our <laughs> first episode. Brent, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, number ten is Operation High Jump. So it was officially titled the United States Navy. Antarctic Development Program, 1946-1947. It rolls right off the tongue. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) It was the United States Navy operation organized by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd Jr. Uh, The operation began when Marines in full battle gear went by the went or sent by the United States to Antarctica on what was described as a training mission. The expedition was filmed by the Navy and then brought back to Hollywood and made into a film called The Secret Land. So Wasn't many that indi- a sequel to Narnia. Yeah, right. <laughs> so many individuals question why an expedition to Antarctica was even going to take place at that time. Because if you remember, we had just gotten out of World War II, and so much manpower and military equipment and money they were spending just to take people down there. So many believe Admiral Byrd was actually sent there to lead this operation to look for coal, 
oil or even uranium because at that time Antarctica was a completely untapped resource. Well, and we had just used a little bit of our uranium on, on yeah, uh, enriched uranium. In, yeah, yeah. Don't enriched, church it up. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so that was actually called off much earlier than expected, and the unofficial sources claim that Bird and his forces encountered heavy resistance. Uh, when they got to Antarctica by flying saucers. Now, these aren't just any flying saucers. Whoa. These are flying no. saucers with swastikas. Swastikas on the side. Right, and right, right, aliens right. piloting them. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, these are the uh, the Nazi uh, flying saucers. They, the yeah. Nordics, or no, I'm sorry, the Aryans. And they, they purportedly, he actually flew over Antarctica, bird himself in a plane, went into the... Middle Earth, because as we all know, kids, the Earth is hollow and it's inhabited by other beings who are these Aryans. <laughs> and the entrance to said hollow Earth is where? It's in Antarctica. That's a given. Yes, we all know that. <laughs> Middle Earth is like where Gandalf lives, right? Yeah, Gandalf and <laughs> a whole bunch of Nazis. Yeah. Just, just making sure. <laughs> now, uh, now, trying to separate the the paranormal aspect from the um, the out there aspect. There really is a lot of speculation and maybe even some proof out there that we really were hunting Nazis in Antarctica. Yeah, we, that, did, that, we did believe that they had a base there. That they had put together a secret Nazi base and, and kind of like, a, you know, how even into like the 70s, they were finding like j- random Japanese soldiers in like bunkers and places. <laughs> what, do what do you mean the, the war is over? War's over? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sounded just like that, too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Perfect accent. Um, I remember hearing something about like a, a cave that was captured on a, f- a photo in so Antarctica. So that cave supposedly is what Bird himself flew into. And when he got in there, all of a sudden it was a tropical climate. This is what the the conspiracy theorists say. He saw mammoths, like woolly mammoths and prehistoric beasts. And all of a sudden he lost control of his plane and he was taken over by Nazi flying saucers who flew him to their leader. And the leader said, hey, listen, we need you to work with us. We're going to help you out, but you got to do what we say. He was released, went back to the president, and the president was like, screw them. No dice. We want nothing to do with them. We'll take them over. Oh, wow. And that's how Scientology was born. <laughs> America. <laughs> America. 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 Just saying. The, 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 and the real strange part about this whole thing, uh, taking speculation away, is that we set out to be there for a long period of time and turned around and hightailed it home in less than two weeks. And there was casualties. and Lots and lots of deaths. We had lost planes and other boats. So something went down, probably. Either that or we just hit some Titanic-style icebergs. and (laughs) Or or some government official somewhere was saying, all right, how do we make a story that's believable for all these people that have died in other ways that are worse than the story that we can come up with. We really (laughs) fucked up. What can we do here? Yeah. (laughs) We have fornicated the canine. We have fornicated the canine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So moving on to number nine. Number nine. Nine. We've got the John F. Kennedy assassination. Oh, Oh, shit. Yeah. About that, John. Well, as, as, as most of your listeners, I'm sure, know, November 22nd, 1963, John F. Kennedy was da- uh, gunned down in Dallas, Dealey Plaza. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested with a 6.5 millimeter man liquor Carcano. 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 I always mess that up. Which actually, a lot of you guys don't know this. Man liquor was John's nickname in college. So <laughs> he's, he's really nice. into this story. He's projecting. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know, he was arrested. It was a one-man show, according to the government. No conspiracy to be seen here. He's, of course, murdered a few days later by Jack Ruby. Right after screaming, I'm a patsy, I'm a patsy. And <laughs> yeah, who just happened to have access to the the biggest villain in the known world at the time. <laughs> Who's surrounded he, by police. All he is is a bar owner, but he just happens to be in there. No yep. problem. Shoots him in the gut. He's dead. Um now, a few things. There, there are thoughts that maybe there wasn't just one gunman, and maybe it wasn't just Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, <gasps> no. Yes, it's true. It's true. that Pick your mouth up off the floor. It gets better. <laughs> the mafia might have been involved. Yeah. Uh, mm. The guy who shot him was a, a known mafia uh, man. The and guy who shot Lee Harvey Oswald. The guy who shot Lee Har- Harvey Oswald, who had terminal cancer, and died not soon after. So what did he have to lose? And a lot of people said, well, it was a mafia hit. Um, also, 
there before and after his death, a lot of people thought that Lee Harvey Oswald was a CIA operative. He was always in Russia. His wife was from Russia. <laughs> he had dealings all over the world. The guy was was out there. When they found him, he had a badge on him that said CIA. No, that's I just made that part <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, you're adding to the story. Okay, I believe that it. would have been a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, badge name CIA, fingerprints, everything on him. It was the case closed. <laughs> no, uh, but it, they uh, the interesting thing about uh, well, there's lots of interesting things about the assassination of JFK, but it's how many people in the world would have benefited um, from his death. That's why that's why people find this so compelling because. The Russians really wanted him dead. The CIA really wanted him dead. LBJ really yeah. wanted him dead. The mafia <laughs> really <laughs> wanted him Are you catching up on a, on a theme here? Yeah. So <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why there were so many shots. It was just a, uh, it was a, it was a surprise. Like, oh, you shot him too? Oh, shit. Like, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> on the same day. That's crazy. Okay. That's like at a firing squad. They, lo- they arm like nine guys, but they only load one bullet. Yeah. The rest of them are blanks. And so nobody ever knows who really shot who. Yep. <laughs> that's literally how World War one started when uh, the Archduke, <laughs> Archduke Fran, Fran, Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. Yep. Uh, there was about ten members of the Black Hand. They were all supposed to kill him that day. They all failed because this bomb went off and it didn't kill him. He's walking out of a sandwich shop. One of the assassins is walking in to grab a, grab a sandwich and kind of you know uh, crying his crying his proverbial wheaties that he didn't get get the job done. And there's the Archduke walk, walking out of the sandwich shop. So he just shoots him right then and there. And here you go. You're in World War One. That's a freebie. You guys didn't even know you're wow. going to get that one. <laughs> Wow. Bonus. Wow, we get a bonus one. That's- you get 11 for your 10 money. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right. Moving on to number eight, the cure number for cancer. Eight. Cure for cancer. All right. Go ahead, John. You're, you're, you're waving at me feverishly. Oh, I didn't know if you, uh, you guys wanted us to stop so you could say number eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, ah. Uh. Uh, no, him, it's uh, too late now. Let, Just go. Let whatever. them do their let them do their silly thing <laughs> that they they it. like to do. I don't pay attention. That's <laughs> that's going to become obvious to you all very it fast. It should be painfully clear already. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the cure for cancer. Uh, basic premise being every everything the government's ever done that you thought wasn't in your best interest, but it was rather in the best interest of large companies. Uh, in this case, big pharma. It big takes it to the, the whole next level. Of lobbying, and that is, we could cure this and and literally prevent millions of people from dying, but we're not going to because money is in treating, not curing. Correct. Doctors, mm-hmm. big pharma, as he said, hospitals, they make their money off of radiation and chemotherapy and things like that, which is true. And you know, we've seen other other drugs like that, but the everyone thinks, well, the U.S. government has that cure. That's why. People in those positions never come down with cancer. Um, plus, you know, you keep the population sick, you keep the population scared. That's the way you control a populace. So that's kind of the prevailing thought process in that one. Wake up, yeah, sheeple! <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's ironic because uh, the all doctors, nurses, uh, work like aid workers, those things they they have to take the Hippocratic oath, which is you know just kind of a, a, a way to you know, uh, uh, say that they're going to do the things in the best interest of the person or their patient. However, you know who doesn't have to take the Hippocratic Oath? Investors in big pharma companies. So, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping one of the twists on your guys' Twisted 10 is that uh, that is an actual conspiracy that's real, and here's the proof, and uh, we're going to blow up big pharma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Might I also point out, Hippocratic Oath sounds a lot like the word hypocrite. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't see where you're going there, John. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't work for me. <laughs> There's no connection. I don't understand. <laughs> These guys have such a good chemistry between the two of them. I swear to God, I, I fell in love with the two of them. Not like that, Andrea. Um, I fell in love with them on their. He podcast has. You should because... see the emails. It is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, I fell in love with them too, but not like you think. Like I actually want to have sex with them. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's all right. No homo. Well, I guess that would be. I mean, that's what that oh, very, is. Very humble. Look, yeah. the most I can offer is a snuggle. Uh, uh, <laughs> it would be awkward. It would absolutely be awkward, but uh, it would be nonetheless snuggly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Plus, Sorry, you know nice. what? You look at like look at Snake Plissken from Escape from New York. They make him <laughs> sick. He does everything you want. Maybe it's just like this big thing where they find the most badass people in our populace and be like, "You want the cure for cancer? Go take this dude out." 
I mean, it just makes, <laughs> I, I think of those movies as documentaries more than, you know, anything else. As long as uh, Waterworld is not going to be a documentary, because as bad as that movie was, that doesn't leave us for a very optimistic I, future. I, don't, I hope there's no no scenario where Kevin Costner is like our hope. So. I, I'm <laughs> hoping that there's never a scenario where I have to pee into a Mr. Coffee just to get drinking water. Funny enough, uh, going along well, with Waterworld, sounds- John actually has a map tattoo, but it's to Dunkin' Donuts on his back. So <laughs> <laughs> in Chicago, he's really sought after, but it's, you know, I don't think he's in the apocalypse. He's going to work out. Well, you've heard the term food desert, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, and for the record, you guys, you guys give me shit over making the connection between uh, the Hippocratic Oath and hypocrite, and yet we're sitting here talking about Snake Plissken and Waterworld. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> all right? That's true. You and know, listen, we're nothing if not uh, unpredictable. There you go. <laughs> you know, one, one of the funniest things I heard in your guys' show was in the, an intro to the, an episode is where you guys did the uh, the DuckTales theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Kim trails. <Ooh. laughs> I was I was like pissing my pants, laughing so hard. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> and by the way, the check is in the mail. Thank you for foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That so brings us to what you. number seven? Number seven. seven. Uh, uh, seven. Uh, uh. All right. If I had my soundboard with me, I would play a clip here, but I, but I don't. The Men in Black. Yeah. <laughs> Men in black. Insert. Yeah. So these are large statured men wearing all black tailored suits who are cold and expressionless and seem to show up in two circumstances to speak to those who claim to have witnessed a UFO and those who research UFOs. They (coughs) represent themselves as being part of a secret organization, sometimes even having a white card with the only the word security written on it. (laughs) <laughs> and that they give to the people they talk to. And they don't use names, but rather numbers when referring to one another and use intimidation and threats to silence people. Who hasn't heard of the men in black? Thank you, Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my uh, my senior English teacher. Well, no, let's not forget the uh, fuchsia lipstick that they wear as well. And the, <laughs> oh, the, yes. the oddly human looking but not really masks like if you are uh, let's pretend that they're not you know part of the government they're some alien race who's traversed space and time or other dimensions to get here and they show up but they just can't get down that whole makeup tutorial that they watched on youtube <laughs> on the way like that doesn't make any sense like they're here to, to strike fear but they're they're they look like your sister at age six when she got in your mom's makeup <laughs> yeah they're smart enough to to tackle the uh the mysteries of faster than light travel but can't quite figure out blush no Oh, hell God, your lips should be pink. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of examples throughout uh, throughout history, especially modern day history of of stories of the men in black. We'll just regale you with one. This is my favorite. Uh, you you all know him, you all love him, Mr. Dan Aykroyd. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Crystal Dan, Skull Vodka himself. If, if you're not familiar, Dan Aykroyd is <laughs> yeah. a huge conspiracy theorist. He's into the paranormal and the weird, and he was actually yeah. in I think around the 2007 ish, uh, making a show for the History Channel, Sci Fi Channel, one of those, and he was uh, he was outside uh, having a cigarette, and he looked across the street and he saw a you know the classic black sedan, two guys in black suits. Uh, staring at him, and he knew that he had seen the men in black. But here's where the story gets weird. Ask me who he was on the phone with. I know who he was on the phone with because I know the story, but I won't spoil it. <laughs> who was what he? do you mean spoil it? He's asking us. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I, you know it, answer the question. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the SATs. Well, I know. I mean, no, no, can I, but can I'm I guess? Gonna answer it's pretty it. obvious. Can I, can I guess? Sure. Yeah, we, I guess. It was Chevy Chase? Oh, no. No, no. no it was the scariest <laughs> part of this I, story. Yeah. I think it's fucking obvious. Belushi. No, it's Britney Spears. Britney Spears. <laughs> Wait, what? what? <laughs> he, he just says a little nonchalant, like, yeah, I'm on the phone with Britney Spears talking about some SNL stuff, and I see this. It's like, he just skims over that part. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a fly on the wall of the Dan Aykroyd, Britney Spears conversation. <laughs> I'm weird. No, I'm weird. Like, it oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm weirder because I'm Canadian. <laughs> I'm weirder because I'm from Florida. <laughs> and Florida wins that one, just for the record. I'll, I'll break that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, we live here. So I know. We, that was for know. you guys. That <laughs> was for you guys. No, uh, but to me, that is the weirdest part of the entire Men in Black story. Why was Dan Aykroyd on the phone for long periods of time with Britney Spears? Especially Britney Spears right around then. That was super crazy shaving my head time-ish. Yeah. Well, that's why. Well, yeah, driving infants in the front <laughs> is seat. Is Britney yeah. Spears an alien? I mean, that's that's a given. I don't think that's... Yeah, we didn't even... That would make sense why he was talking to her. <laughs> it would explain how she's from Longwood. Yes. <laughs> makes why sense of, like, why people even listen to her. It's all probably hidden propaganda <laughs> in the music. If you play a Britney Spears record b- backwards, it gives you the coordinates to Zeta Reticuli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number six. Number six. Number six. six. Uh, uh. All right, number six is a somewhat controversial one, but we will give you the facts and the suppose and then the uh, conspiracy behind it. Nine eleven on Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, on, Groner still doesn't melt. No. <laughs> now we, we are not uh, for the record. Um, well, we haven't gotten to the twist yet, but we are not. We're just going through and telling you the facts. On Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, Al-Qaeda executed a plan in which they hijacked four passenger airplanes in order to crash two of them into the World Trade Center's Twin Towers, one into the Pentagon, and one into either the Capitol Building or the White House. The first three succeeded. The fourth crashed near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The death toll has been established at 2,996 people, including the 19 hijackers, making it the worst terrorist attack in United States history. Just in case you didn't know all that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. Uh, I thought it sounded familiar. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. But besides the unspeakable horror, the plan also unleashed a plethora of 9-11 conspiracy theories. Uh, the, the 9-11 conspiracy theorists, known collectively as truthers, uh, make varying assert- assertions, including the claims that the attacks were uh, condoned by the U.S. government or that they even, um, as a false flag operation, did, it, did them themselves. Also, that they could have been a pretext for launching a war on terror. Uh, there's also an anti-Semitic slant to it that Israel did it, and it was actually a uh, uh, masterminded uh, by an international Jewish conspiracy. I had not heard that one before. Yeah, and uh, so those rabbis get down, son. And then, of course, <laughs> you the- name any conspiracy, someone out there is going, "The Jews did it." Yeah, it doesn't true. matter. It, it doesn't matter. Where's my taco? The Jews did it. Like people are. We'll find a reason <laughs> any reason to be anti-Semitic. anti-Semitic yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> And then last but not least, the good old fashioned, uh, it was to bring on the new world order or the Illuminati. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying, so you're saying Beyonce is behind the World Trade Center? No, that's what we were getting at. I didn't know if we were made that, you know, evident or not. So good job picking it up. Yeah. Well done. I I, I see what's going on here. I hear it. It's confirmed now. Yeah. It's not the new world order. It's NWA. That was who was, was setting up. (laughs) Not NWO, NWA. No, see, that's how you know NWA. That's how you knew. That's why EZE got AIDS because they had to take him out. It was, it was step one in the plan. Like, <laughs> where were you on 9 11? Step today? one, take uh, out Easy E. You want to know where I was 9 11, really? <laughs> no, I, no, I was joining the Navy. I was in the yeah, Navy. I, I was a, in the Navy during 9 11. We heard the story. He joined the day before 9 11. No, no, I, I, was, uh, I was there on 9 11. I was getting my blood drawn. I was getting ready to sign my contract for the United States no Navy. Shit. But you were in the, the Army. What I happened? was in the Army, exactly, because I took the planes flying into the buildings as a fucking sign not to join the military that day. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm sitting there getting my blood drawn, and then some guy runs in and yells, holy shit, turn on the TV. And we got the TV on just in time to see the second plane hit. Wow. And I pulled the needle out of my arm and said, I'm not signing shit. Oh, Did you ever see the Futurama where they're standing in line to get their military ID cards and they're going to quit right away? They're like, is there any <laughs> catch? They're like, the only way there'd be a catch if war were declared and they sign and that alarm goes off he's like what was that war were declared <laughs> that's, like, that's exactly what happened to you that's terrible <laughs> yep that's literally what happened <laughs> what a hell of a, a first day <laughs> yep yeah right first day on the job the terrorists won <laughs> <laughs> all right fellas that's our top six all right okay. so what we will do now is we will take a quick five minute break and uh, when we come back, do you have a little teaser for us for after the break? Uh, oh, we yeah. Do. Well, when when we come back, I think we already teased it. You guys already teased it a little bit. We we there might be lizards involved. Oh, Ooh. Jay does like to tease. There might even be pizza teased. involved. Ooh, oh well, now lizards. you're really teasing me. I'm gonna get my Mothra T-shirt ready for this one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so we're gonna take a break, and we will be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it.
Village Idiot Pub. You locals know about it. You guys from out of town have to check them out. Village Idiot Pub is now a proud sponsor with Living Podcariously and the Twisted Ten Podcasts. It's more than just about commercials, though. The cast here will be taking our show on the road to Village Idiot to record some episodes as well as hold events. They have over 30 beers on tap, including ciders and Hefeweizen, my favorite, as well as hundreds of bottle choices. Adam, you forgot my favorite, all the delicious wine. (laughs) So get your friends together and enjoy the board games, puzzles, and the giant Jenga. Let the owner Jason, as well as the rest of the staff there, take excellent care of your beer drinking needs. Mention either one of our shows to the staff and get 10% off your tab. Tuesday is open mic, Wednesday is trivia, Thursday is karaoke, Friday and Saturday night are live music. Visit them at 4 Harrison Street, Suite 103, Cocoa, Florida, or Village Idiot Pub on Facebook. And don't forget, they are a dog-friendly location, so bring your friends, family, and fur babies. Hey, it's Adam. If you enjoy the hosts or the content of The Twisted Ten, be sure to check out our other show. It's called Living Podcariously. While The Twisted Ten may get crass and explicit occasionally, it holds no water to Living Podcariously. We do get a little bit more rough and raw on that show. We have a lot of fun producing it and have had some awesome guests. And as always, thanks for listening. Okay, we have 45 seconds before the anesthesia wears off, so we have to make this quick. That's not very good anesthesia. Focus, now. Remember why we're here. Honestly, no. Sandwiches? Soon. Look, we're here to tell the Twisted Ten listeners about our show, The Conversation Hats Podcast in which a hat tells us to talk about geek culture, the arts and the abstract, features guests from the creative industries along with original sketches and music. Oh yeah, I guess we'd mentioned that The Conversation Hat is available on iTunes, SoundCloud and on StabbedPanda.com, right? I really wish we'd scripted this before breaking in. Uh, Liam, they're starting to wake up. Darn, there's no time. Come on, through the window. We forgot the sandwiches. Hey guys, it's Adam again. With all the podcasts you have the ability to listen to, we here at The Twisted Ten, Living Podcariously, You're 40 Now What, would like to thank you for choosing our shows. We love to have fun and put our creative talents to work, delivering you, our listeners, something original and entertaining. I recently had the opportunity to guest on a riot of a podcast called Trivia Geeks from the Blazing Caribou Studios Network. This isn't your normal trivia podcast or game show for that matter. Imran Javid hosts this hilarious rendition of Bar Like Trivia without the trivia, foolishness and downright insanity each week with two co-hosts, Carrie Sims and Drew Papsky. Together, they bring on a myriad of podcasters like myself and entertain us for the hour. The show has an explicit tag and no one on that show is afraid to use it. Please go check out my new hilarious friends over at Trivia Geeks at BlazingCaribouStudios.com or anywhere you find your podcast. Just search Trivia Geeks. Thanks for listening. And welcome back to the Twisted Ten. Ooh, this one, I'm gonna have to play some song, some music like, uh, uh, what is it from uh, X Files? X Files music. Yeah. <laughs> Jay's got it. Yeah. So uh, we are here with uh, Brent and John, and uh, we are going through. We just went through our first uh, ten through six. If you want to recap, just the titles of the ten through six for us. Absolutely. So we started out with number ten was Operation High Jump. Then we had number nine, John F. Kennedy assassination. Number eight was the cure for cancer. Seven was men in black. And number six was the oh so popular 9-11 that got a groan from everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Including awesome. us. So that, brings us <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to number five. Take it away, sir. All right. Sorry. So number five. Number, number five. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so we've got <laughs> UFO cover-ups. That's kind of a blanket statement. So going from Roswell to Aurora, Texas, to the battle for L.A., the U.S. government, as well as governments around the world, see this one, we're broadening our horizons, Mm -hmm. not only know about aliens and their agenda, but either conspire with them or are fighting against them 
people say, all while keeping it secret from the general population. Just depends on which ufologist you ask and what book they read that week. <laughs> and <Wow. laughs> if you are a ufologist that believes in, let's make up one here, the Aurora incident, but you don't believe in Roswell, the people that believe in Roswell are complete idiots, and you're <laughs> the only one who's smart. It is an interesting vibe to to dig into the yes. psyche. Shit, I feel, I feel like that every day of my life. <laughs> well, I feel like everyone other than me is an idiot, so I get where they're coming from but yeah it's it's a, a different level i guess you guys can probably tell how much fun doing our podcast is on a weekend and week out <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> so people you know they think they want to know why like are we doing it because they're they're giving us technology or are they stealing humans and we have no control over it or are we doing it and Reverse engineering. Who, who was the guy that was reverse engineering stuff at Area Bob, 51? Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Yeah, Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Not related to the law offices of Bob Blah Blah. Bob Blah Blah. Bob Blah Blah. Bob Blah Blah. <laughs> Gotta love anytime you can put Scott Bayo in a show, you do it. We sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want him in charge of me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, look, he. He he did endorse Trump and Trump did win. I'm yeah, just saying. True. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, Scott Bayo is more powerful than I thought, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Bayo is more powerful than Chuck Norris. <laughs> oh, and this is also a Wait bad a time minute. to bring that up too, because Joni just died. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. There's another conspiracy for you, number twelve. I was about yes. to call it. I was about to call it the Bayo bump, but that's not near as funny now that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm digging it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a specific story around the UFOs is, is Bob Lazar. Uh, we did an entire two episodes on this, so we won't we won't bore you with all the details. But basically, this guy says, "Yeah, I worked for the U.S. government." Um, actually, just south of Area 51, um, at an even more secret area. The secret area of the secret area right. called S4. S4. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, we had plenty of UFOs there. They were uh, we we were reverse engineering them. Uh, I I brought my friends out to to watch them test drive them at night. And he was just this, he's this. And they fired me because of it. And he, <laughs> those bastards. And yeah. he's just the most normal guy to listen to. He's he's a physicist and he talks like one. Um, it, it, he doesn't come off as some sort of tinfoil hat wearing nut. Job. He's a physicist allegedly because anyone who tries to look into his past, they can't find any mm -hmm. records or anything. And he says, "Oh, that's because they scrubbed me. They deleted my entire past." So yeah, and take that with a grain of salt. And there's like at least one yearbook where he actually was in the year book at it was MIT no it was the phone book and it was at Los Alamos uh, jet propulsion lab or whatever so okay me and facts don't get along and then people are like oh yeah because he was the janitor <laughs> you know so nice the interesting thing about that if you want to learn more I mean just google Bob Lazar and you'll be amazed but the interesting thing about it is how much government might have been involved in that whole thing I mean because they would have had to have been for everything he said to have been true just from how they changed around his background and how they got rid of his records and how no one can find uh, they, I mean there are de there's a department that he said he worked for and had a tax stub from this that according to the US government doesn't exist yeah. so there is some really interesting um, huh. uh, aspects to aspects the story. to the story yeah oh. that brings us to number four Number four. Cuatro. Number four. Ah, ah, ah. Might be our favorite. It's definitely it's definitely top ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, oh you guys. That was funny. You Nobody's guys. ever made that joke on this show, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> Reptilians. Yes. Oh, nice. All right. So reptilians, also known as lizard people, saurians, draconians, reptiloids, or even reptoids. Well, check that. You're not supposed to call them reptoids because they consider that a slur. That's their word. Yeah, I never did their face. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Uh, but they Drax. were cracks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, as they refuse to, I, I mean, reveal themselves to us, I suppose we don't know for sure. They are a reptile-like humanoid organism from space and or another dimension. Uh, what, what dimension is that? The lower fourth The lower fourth dimension. dimension. Oh, I thought it was the upper six. But In case okay, you're yeah, playing you're right. along at home, yeah, lower no, fourth. Lower. F you nerd. Right. You nerds lost me on that one. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> they <laughs> are <It's> lower. <laughs> lower. Fourth I was told me. there'd be no math. <laughs> 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 exactly. Regardless of where they're from, they are hell-bent on taking over this world and or this 
dimension. They're known for uh, feeding on angry emotions and or children's blood and or children's tears slash negative energy as they rape them. Oh, my Whoa. God. So they established themselves as Krampus. <laughs> and manifested themselves <laughs> as Trump. And guys, I really wish I was kidding about that. I'm not. Reptilians are pedder asses. They really are. <laughs> like every description of them, that's what they do. And, that's and then they, they rape are. the children and eat their tears. Mm. That's yeah. disgusting. That is a, that took a, that took a turn I wasn't expecting. That Ooh. is the best dead baby joke. So we ever. do all these <laughs> these stories on our show, and every week we're like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna research something, and you would not believe the amount of stories that turn into pedophile stories. You're like, what the hell does this have to do with this? It's like the whole, wow. I don't, I hope I'm not spoiling anything and anything you have coming up, but it sounds a little bit like the whole Larry King conspiracy as well. Oh, I'm not even familiar with that. I don't know what that is. Okay. Either. Not the Larry King you're thinking of. Oh, it's a different Larry King. Oh no, no. Maybe Holy it's a future crap. topic for uh, hysteria 51. Yeah. Okay. Well, I recommend that for you guys do a uh, Larry King. Look you want to give that. us a teaser on what is that? Guys, I'm curious. It's, now. it's hard to explain it. Larry King was, uh, I can't remember what he actually did. Like maybe like he ran hotels or something. I forget what he was, but um, he had this huge conspiracy against him where he ran like these pagan rituals and ran like these underground secret. As uh, you do, you know, you got to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there was like uh, pedophilia going on. There was like murder going on of children. There was a uh, rape and all kinds of crap. And there was huge figureheads that were attend these uh, parties you know, a lot like uh, eyes wide shut kind of stuff, but Damn you know, you with beat me children, to it. <laughs> you know, with children, and uh, but um, there was like high figures. They were saying like uh, the Bushes were there. Ronald Reagan attended these. A lot, a lot of high profile politicians and figureheads would attend these Damn. things. So you know, you're as Brent was saying before, these types of stories just keep popping up. Uh, one of the one of the remaining few we have on the list sounds very similar to that, and we'll get to it in a moment. To finish up on reptilians, um. It, you you probably want to know where they live. They <laughs> God knows I do, John. <laughs> they might live under us in the Earth's crust, but they also <laughs> might live in the moon, which might or might not also Ooh. be hollow, and which might or might not <laughs> also be their spaceship. So we, Earth is hollow, the moon is hollow. Got correct. You. Oh, which is which is why the moon looks so big every now and then. They're shuttling back and forth. But I thought it was yeah. made of correct. cheese. But that also could be because the Earth is flat and it's actually not mm -hmm. that far away. So yeah, the turtle that we're perched on is, is leaning and and it moves the flat Earth a little bit. You know, you've seen the pictures. Yeah, of uh, course, yeah. <laughs> obviously, as depicted in most uh, professional maps. Yes, yes, real maps, real, yes. real maps. maps. Yes, real maps are flat. Therefore, the Earth is flat. That's, That's a given. Yes. Uh, have you guys? So on a serious note, so Tack and I both work at Kennedy Space Center for contracts out there at NASA. Have you guys ever met, because I haven't personally, but have you ever met an actual flat earth theorist? Yes, before? and um, we <laughs> we lost some fans over it because we were joking about it on our on our um, Facebook, discussion Facebook page. discussion page, yeah, and they did not like it and did not want to discuss it in like an, now I don't mean face to face, but we've talked to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it blew my mind. Like, well, let's talk about it. No, no, you're an idiot. You sheeple, bah, you know? And like, wow, really? <laughs> yeah. And we've talked about, we want to do an episode on it to have them on, but I just thought it was going to degrade into an argument kind of thing, you know? So, <laughs> And I, do, do you guys do you guys say listen this is where I work <laughs> like you're an idiot <laughs> yeah well so we, well, I've technically never, I work at SpaceX and he works for NASA so. yeah but we're both out at the Space Center I've never run into and I begged because I'd love a good debate especially when the cards are stacked against the other person in we such already a strong ruined fashion. it because you said a good debate so <laughs> well, yeah that's I guess that's a good point I guess that's I guess that's a good point uh, I like a debate that I can entertaining debate I like a debate I can win immediately <laughs> and uh, i've never met a flat earth theorist i ever. know i want, I to, want to so bad me too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's get one i know on the what show. to get you for your birthday <laughs> yes Yay! don't you guys wish i'd have been like actually john is a flat earther <laughs> <laughs> would be so awesome oh this i would have made this so much more fun i'm just saying what if it's a stripper who is a flat earth theorist? she can say whatever she wants Ooh, I mean, she's fine it's <laughs> well yeah you know what they're they're right it <laughs> It doesn't matter at that it's point. Totally, yeah. at, at that point, she's a stripper. Who cares about her opinion? Unless, well, unless I, it's the, a, unless it's a. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. 
No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say flat and stripper don't really go together for me, so I'm out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's also very that's true. what I was going to say. Unless it's a flat stripper that's a flat earth theorist, then it's a lose lose. See, I just talk <laughs> over you and I can get the joke out faster. That's how it works. <laughs> Spot on. It, it hey. is technically your show. It is your show, yeah. <laughs> that's literally what happens every week to me. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. moving on, we've got number three. Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, hold, oh. On. hold on. I am not oh. done. I got to finish oh. my reptilian. Got more petter oh, stuff. Keep going. Reptilian. You just have to remember that where they came from they might or might not be the living descendants of dinosaurs um just like you know kind of like we're the living descendants of monkeys uh they could be aliens they could be the interdimensional travelers they could be the spawn of an ancient lizard-like god people known as the anunnaki and yes. i suppose they could be a mixture of all of the above I've occasionally heard about Nibiru tying into lizard people too. Plan X, yeah, yeah, like that's their home world, and they they went into the ground, and they're going back home when Nibiru comes back this way, yep. which is happening in October of this year. So set your calendars. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I always I always thought that uh, Dennis Hopper being in the Super Mario Brothers movie was pretty prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> you Muster mean the Goombas? You mean the Super yeah. Mario Brothers documentary? I think is yes, what exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's only a movie if you drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, just in case you want to look out for for the lizard people, uh, you need to remember a few things. They could be shapeshifters, they, but they also might control their appearance by using high-frequency vibrations to project holograms of human form from their liquid crystal skulls. <laughs> Ooh. Which means the Flash is a reptilian. That's exactly right. Yep. <laughs> and, or, and last but not least, they might just be wearing good old fashioned skin suits, like you know, I think the TV show V. And it puts the lotion on right, the skin. Right. Oh. <laughs> that kind of oh, wrong skin suit. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> the best skin suit ever was in uh, Men in Black. Ironically, Edgar's skin suit oh, at the that beginning was of the great. movie. Great. Yes. yes. <laughs> but wear the correct shade of lipstick, though, please. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from reptilians, let's hit number three. Number three. three. Uh, uh, uh. This one actually we touched on earlier a little bit. The New World Order. It's a <laughs> secretive power elite with a globalist agenda and is conspiring to eventually rule the world through an authoritarian Authoritarian. I don't know that word. I'm, I can't speak right now. Words are hard. Words are hard. Authoritarian <laughs> world government, which will replace sovereign nation states and all encompassing propaganda whose ideology hails the establishment of said new world order as the culmination of history's progress. What's that mean? They want to rule everything. I think that's we should just wrote that, John. That makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> so New World Order is Kim Jong Un. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. I really thought that pizza rolls were the culmination of history's progress. I thought we were done after that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ranch blasted pizza rolls. That's it. That's it. We're done. <laughs> when you when you really dig into the the history and the mystery of the NWO, you find that Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, these are the the figureheads, and then you've got uh, I mean they're uh, too sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> we were all holding back from doing that. Yeah, every one of us. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's Snap the best. Into one. a reptilian. <laughs> Eric Bischoff was their leader. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone knows that, you know, the government's just a figurehead and Trump's Trump's just a puppet for the new world order and you know, no one really dies when they're in in parts of power they just go to area 51 and get their brains uploaded to the <laughs> the neural the net frame. yeah right i've mind oh, God. <laughs> and, and that's all Dang. true no <laughs> <laughs> there are about 30 different ways the uh the new world order can go depending on what book you read and uh the fun part about new world order is it oftentimes ties into many of the other conspiracies it's kind of an all-encompassing conspiracy the new world order is run by reptilians the new world order was responsible for 9-11 the new world order had, had jfk killed the new world order has already met aliens i mean it ties into all of them that's right and as oh. we're saying that there's an ambulance driving by that's i thought i heard <laughs> something <laughs> we were wondering what that was i, I grabbed my I thought maybe it was the lizard people. Yeah, I grab my headphone and I'm like, oh shit, is that a ghost? It's not What's... October yet. We're okay. <laughs> it's the man keeping us down. I know. I'm concerned about this now, all of our safety. Hey, Adam, did you notice there's a white car that says security out front? That's a good point. <laughs> and two guys in black suits are walking up and it's night and they've got sunglasses. It's is really that, weird. Is that Britney Spears? <laughs> yeah. His lipstick is impeccable. 
<laughs> it looks fantastic. He, they've really mastered the rouge. <laughs> <laughs> they got it down. All right, moving on to number two. <laughs> Number Those two. two. Uh, uh, uh. Number two exhausts me. Uh, it and it, it it we alluded to it earlier. Uh, you've all heard the term. It's Pizzagate. Those <laughs> yeah. those fun pedophilia stories. Here's another one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Settle in by the fire, kids. We got another pedophilia story. <laughs> Pizzagate started during the 2016 United States presidential election cycle uh, by, a Twitter u- by a Twitter user described as a white supremacist, uh, and it was then spread on by 4chan, or u- 4chan users and then on Reddit on the the underscore Donald forum. The subreddit thereof. Yeah. Uh, it, it alleged that high-level politicians like the Clintons, as well as their uh, campaign uh, uh, chair, John Podesta, were involved in a secretive child abuse and trafficking, trafficking ring after Podesta mentioned Comet Ping Pong in his emails released by WikiLeaks. Theorists decided that the restaurant was being used as a front for the trafficking operation. Some of the purported quote-unquote evidence of this conspiracy included a mural on the wall at Comic Ping Pong uh, featuring some weird imagery and the idea that words like cheese and sauce used out of context in Podesta's emails were actually code word for politicians trying to conceal said abuse. Um, It is, the thing goes deep and wide and... um, Mm, I like when you talk like that. Deep and wide. But you know, you you mentioned <laughs> wrong the, topic uh, for that. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> you mentioned the the Larry uh, the Larry King thing earlier, and and some yeah. of these weird events that people reportedly go to. Um, supposedly, Podesta and his brother, who has a bunch of weird art. Now, this is actually true. They've shown pictures of it. He's got some weird art with like children tied up and stuff like that. That that's the, be it, nice. He might be the next Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, but the the Potesta and the other cl- went to these things called uh, spirit cooking exhibitions allegedly. Um, and but they actually do go on at rich people's homes. This lady has a website how she does it, and it's 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 a large cooking exposition uh, inside someone's home. Uh, only they cook with a lot of body fluids, not of like dead people or anything, but they, I guess were donated. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't go into what various fluids. Use your imagination. I will. So there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. The problem with this story is as sick as it sounds, and everyone knows, like that guy went into the comet ping pong and shot it up, and then he's like, "Oops, there's not even a basement here for me to look for little kids in." The problem is, this stuff really does go on, and that's I. I scary to say the least and in fact it was like in the 80s uh, a bunch of politicians in england were having like sex trafficking ring with children so it's not an unheard of thing yeah they got busted and went to jail and And then when this came out people like oh the clintons i knew it you know humanity disappoints me it's almost as if we're a paula abdul song one step forward two steps back i'm just saying (laughs) (laughs) that's right You tell it, MC Scat Cat. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Who actually died of feline AIDS? Oh, as long as we're being the downer of your whole show, let's just keep it. <laughs> and the next one, well, you know, pedophilia. How many H references can we fit in this episode? And the that wor- was my first three crush more, three more. Up. The worst part is that the downer wasn't pedophilia; it was about the AIDS. Yeah, that was the AIDS. line. Yeah, yeah, and that was to do it. A pedophilia, just yeah. AIDS. <laughs> Feline AIDS. That was what really drew the line. <laughs> well, and fuck those little kids. Save the kitties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's our new T-shirt idea, John. No. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> in in, uh, in every episode, we flirt with where the line is, but normally we get in well past it about five minutes in. So kudos, kudos yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That brings us to number one. Number Uno. one. Ah, ah, number one. one. Kim trails. Ooh. Oh Ooh. god! Yes, I love that. So as you see. God damn it. <laughs> that was the DuckTales parody song. So it was Kim Trails. Ooh. Well, the way they did it was just funny. You know, what, what I love, before you even get into this, because we just had an air show here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the airport is right by my day job. And I actually had someone try to convince me that air shows are just an excuse 
for the government to concentrate a bunch of chemtrail chemicals oh my God. over a specific area. And that's why the air shows travel around. Right. You guys work for SpaceX <laughs> and NASA, so we're talking to the enemy right now. You're like, oh, chemtrails, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to redact uh, about 30% of this podcast tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, you're right though. Whenever a, a certain town is starting to get a little uppity and you know a little too big for their britches, send hey, them the air show. Let's have an air show. <laughs> send in the blue. That's what they are. They'll, and they uh, these are military pilots. Like send the send in the Thundercats and the Blue Angels. They'll make quick work of them. <laughs> or however other way lizards laugh. I don't know. <laughs> you like you don't know how lizards laugh. Who cares? I I the Thundercat laughed. Yeah. Uh, like Lion or somebody. <laughs> So I, I love the fact that these Kim trails, it actually stems from an actual United States Air Force wrote up an article or a booklet in 1996. And it was called, and you got to get a, you got to get a, a, a kick out of the name, mm-hmm. weather modification, or I'm sorry, weather as a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025. That was oh, the wow. title that kind of set off this, um, Mass hysteria of chemtrails. That is an ominous <laughs> title. Oh uh, yeah, that's like that's like the too long didn't read Cliff Note synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> What's this about? Just read the title. Yeah, yeah, you get it. But you know what? A lot of people have bought into this, and a lot of famous people. Prince was a chemtrail guy. Uh, Chuck what? Norris was a ch- Alex Jones, of course, is a or at least the character that Alex the Jones is thereof. portraying is a, a chemtrail guy, and actually. They did cloud seeding years ago, you know, to try to help with snow and rain and stuff yeah, like that. Like harp and all that. Yeah, that's how we got Hurricane Andrew. And well <laughs> <laughs> you can't really Ouch. blame people for not trusting the government when you look back at those f- videos from like the fifties where they're like D E T or I'm sorry, D D T, your friend, and they show the children like playing in the big sprayers, like, bring your children out, have them love D D T, you know, and then you're like two months later, yeah. oh by the way, they gave you all cancer. We're <laughs> we're sorry about or that. Or better yeah, uh, in case of nuclear explo- explosion, get under your desk, it'll be fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You'll be safe. Or, or the the one turning point for conspiracy theorists to say, ha ha, gotcha, was the Tuskegee Airmen. That has to be one of the worst conspiracies that turned out to be true that our federal government really did do. Experiment on them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, ridiculous. Hmm. But, it, but I mean, it wasn't even that good of a conspiracy, meaning um, they like it wasn't not known for long. There was lots of people found out about it pretty soon thereafter. Now, a lot of it didn't get reported as widely because there was a lot of racists running around. Right. Well, yeah, that's our country was that way in when was it? The 40 late 40s early 50s is It Tuskegee? wasn't a conspiracy because no it, it's not that no one talked about it because of a conspiracy. No one talked about it because no one gave a shit. Oh, I guess right. that's, that's the right. point. It was, yeah, they didn't even tell people not to talk about it. They were just like, "Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it." And that's what's d- the disgusting <laughs> part. <laughs> But yeah. and the problem is with these chemtrails, though, it's like people are also, well, they're they're doing it to manipulate the weather. No, they're doing it to make you sick. No, they're doing, people even say like it makes you turn homosexual or or, or makes you docile or makes you violent. Like or it's all over the place. Or they're doing it to control your cat. Yeah. You don't get it. Uh, well, I mean, you know, Prince did the song Pussy Control. Oh, that's right. That's you know? right. <laughs> Ooh. That was a bit of a yeah, reach. Yeah, it but. makes sense. <laughs> That yes. was that was a good segue. Fuck the, the kid, Simon save the saying. kitty. What we, what, uh, what I like to call that a callback. I, I'm <laughs> oh, taking comedy okay. lessons, and they're supposed to do those. All right, kids. So that's our list. Here is the kicker. That what a twist. Here's the twist to it. Nice. One of those the government has actually came out and said is true. <gasps> One of these are true. One of, One of them, true. the government has said, you're right. It was it, a conspiracy. Can you guys do us a favor and recap the titles of 10 through 1, if you don't mind? John, you know what? I did that last time. I'll let you. Love to. <laughs> Number 10. Delegate. Operation. I got upper management written all over me. I delegate. Take uh, <laughs> credit for all the good stuff. You're right. You do. <laughs> all right. Number 10, Operation High Jump. Number 9, the John F. Kennedy assassination. Number 8, the cure for cancer. Number seven, Men in Black. Number six, 9-11. Number five, UFO cover-ups. Number four, Reptilians. Number three, The New World Order. Number two, Hashtag Pizzagate. And number <laughs> one, Chemtrails. Woo! <laughs> Damn. All right, so let's go around the room and... Um. Uh, 
see which ones we think. I'll I'll start on this one, Tag. Sure, go ahead. Uh, you know, several of those have ties to possibly having some truth behind them, mm-hmm. to, as far as I can tell. But That's what um, makes it a conspiracy? I I uh, you know that extra building falling in New York, that extra World Trade Center number seven or whatever the fuck that number was way off to the side. <laughs> I'm right. just saying. That's that seems really unlikely. So uh, I'm gonna go with chemtrails tech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with reptilians. Ooh, you think, you're good th- you nice. think that reptilians is true? Yes. And the government owned up to it. It's a creationist okay. conspiracy. Okay. She's okay. watching okay. CNN right now, guys. Turn it on. <laughs> yeah, she 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 thinks that because she knows what I can do with my tongue. So it's, <laughs> oh oh okay. Uh, we took it there. <laughs> we took it there. We went there. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I want to say high jump. Oh okay. okay. All right, Tack. All right. Um, I was actually going to go with high jump as well. Um. So, are any of us right? No, not a single one of you. <laughs> really? Are you sure I'm not right? <laughs> well, I, I guess we should so, say, as they are conspiracies, we can neither prove nor disprove yeah. uh, the neither other confirm nine. Nor deny. <laughs> yeah, it's Pizzagate, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, my cats are great at killing lizards, though. So we've got our first row of defense. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> the, so, the actual what? truth. Mm-hmm. The JFK conspiracy. That's right. What? In uh, 1978, uh, uh, it was 1978, 1979, the House Select Committee on Assassinations. That's a real thing, or at least the it was. The HSCA. Reexamined the evidence with the help of forensic panel. The HCSA involved congressional hearings and ultimately concluded that Oswald assassinated Kennedy probably as the result of a conspiracy. The HSCA concluded that Oswald fired shots number one, two, and four, and that an unknown assassin fired shot number three, but missed from near the corner of a picket fence that was uh, above and to the left of President Kennedy's. The looker from the the grassy knoll. The grassy knoll, right, (laughs) uh, on Dealey Plaza. However, the conclusion has also been criticized, especially for its reliance upon disputed acoustic evidence. So they said uh, they think there was more than one shooter, but they still doubled down on on, on Oswald. Oswald being what? it. And in fact, that wasn't the only assassination. They also said that MLK was a cover up. Yeah, and that was the same, a, same report. They said MLK was also a conspiracy. And the fact him. that they don't, I don't ever remember being taught that in school blows my mind. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the government came right, out and said, right. yeah, it was. Yep. And uh, the, I mean, now we we did like we did an episode on JFK, and uh, we have obviously different opinions surrounding the conspiracy. Like, I I don't think uh, this is just me. I don't think Oswald was involved at all. I think he was really a patsy and a CIA operative, just a pure patsy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, the government has fully and out in the open admitted that there was a conspiracy behind his assassination, and they said that there was more than one shooter. Was it James Franco? Yes. God, <laughs> man. <laughs> On it. Because I, I saw where he was there. <laughs> and he was ordered to do it by Stephen King. That's the way it works. <laughs> yeah. So there, that's, that's our 10. That's our top that's 10 awesome, in no guys. particular order. But yeah, take it. Take that order for what you will. Um, a little more pedophilia than you probably were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ironically, uh, not more than we usually talk about on the show. It's weird. <laughs> it's so strange. <laughs> it's weird that people from the outside brought it in. That's what's weird. <laughs> <laughs> some some guests bring wine. I'm just saying. Know your audience. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what, what gift did you bring? I brought pedophilia. <laughs> How generous! But did you bring enough for the rest of the class? <laughs> so now that we made your uh, skin oh, crawl, thank now. you. <laughs> now, that, now it's getting weird. That was a really cool list, guys. That's that's uh, that's going to be a fun one to to go back and and put up there because sometimes I'll I'll spoil the twist in the title, but uh, you can't. I can't. There's no way you can spoil this twist, and they got, they got to listen to the end. And this episode yeah. to get that twist. Well, and like we said, those are the only ten conspiracies with the government. That's it. There's no others. So you know, <laughs> no, no, no more. That's a good not point. One. <laughs> not not a single one out there. So yeah, that's, that's we cool. were thorough. Well, I appreciate them coming and doing our last show because we're not going to survive after tonight. Yeah, no, that's so. a good point because I think we drop pedophilia, Trump, uh, all the different conspiracies together. Yeah, the when lizards, we, the reptilians are going to take well, us out. Uh, yeah, I'm already on the list. Uh, you remember the. Florida Panther I saw on I-95 the other day. Uh-oh. That's a good point. They, we don't it? find them up here, but someone's after me. Someone's caught to get Someone, you. It was probably, somebody ran me off the road this morning. Did you tell him to get his ass back been, to the rink? 
<laughs> it's it, Hillary Clinton. Isn't too, this so. a situation where we have to ask our guests if they're cops? They have to tell us, otherwise, it's not going to be legal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> live a little. Oh, what, guys? I'm sorry, you're cutting out. I can't hear you. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're going through a tunnel. <laughs> tunnel. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we appreciate that uh, awesome list. Hey, so, we appreciate uh, it too. It was a blast. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Um, so uh, what kind of social media you guys got? Where can people find you? Well, you can find us online pretty much all of social media. Just look for Hysteria 51. You can find all of the links at Hysteria51.com. And if you're new to the show, um, check us out on iTunes. But check out our Facebook discussion group. It's called Hysteria Nation. So just search Hysteria Nation. We'd love for, well, of course, all of you and then everyone listening at home to to come join in on the on the chat uh, involve yourself in the conversation. We can talk about this top 10 and a whole lot more. And you can help me plan my Kevin Smith cosplay for, for later, <laughs> yes. later this year, my next comic con I go to. <laughs> I just want to hear you talk about Batman all day, all day long. <laughs> now your guys, your guys show has, uh, very rapidly become one of my, uh, my go-to subscribed podcasts that I, you know, listen to when I'm shitting, but that's not the point. It's one of my favorite now. So. <laughs> my wife said to me recently, she's like, do you realize how many people probably only listen to you when they're taking a shit? <laughs> like, I take pride in that, honey. And you know what? I'm happy to be part of the part of the festivities. <laughs> well, well, hey, we love to hear that for real. Like, that through. is better to be fantastic. listened to. Better to be listened to while you're shitting than have you shitting on the show. So yeah, uh, I'll take that. That's true. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good idea. Mics in each one of our bathrooms. I'm just that's saying. also that's our new T-shirt. So. That's our new T-shirt. Yes, <laughs> maybe podcast on the shitter. The ideas are uh, just flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Some are kind of shitty ideas. Yeah. You know. oh, oh, there we go. Wow, that wow, is a wow. studio I would not want to be in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, cool. Well, uh, we appreciate you stopping by. And if you guys, if listeners out there want to get a hold of us, we are at thetwisted10 at gmail.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter at thetwisted10. Facebook, uh, obviously, facebook.com slash thetwisted10. And uh, check out the Dichotomy Media YouTube channel. That's our like parent company that manages all of our, our podcasts. Uh, we put all of our shows out there on both audio and sometimes we record special little videos and promotions as well as cartoons that TAC does. Uh, that covers Twisted 10, Living Podcariously, the You're 40, Now What podcast, and the latest incarnation that TAC has been working on. That is our Get Out Penny animated series. Uh, mm-hmm. About to release episode number four of that. So uh, be sure Indeed. to go check those things out. And uh, again, any of our listeners that are looking for another one of those really cool podcasts to check out, be sure to check out Hysteria 51. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. indeed. Thanks again, guys. We had a blast. Indeed. We, yeah, it was, it was a good time, man. I appreciate you guys doing this for us today. Good, good yeah. show. <laughs> All right, so uh, well, I'm Tack. I'm Adam. I'm Andrea Joy. I'm Jay Alvarez. And you guys are? I'm Brent. And I'm John. <laughs> All right, and we will see you next week. Wait, wait, wait. Don't hit stop on the episode just yet. Hey, this is Tack from the podcast you just listened to. And if you enjoy Living Podcariously or The Twisted Ten, then you're going to love my new podcast I co-host with my lifelong buddy, Ron Caniff. It's called You're 40, Now What? It's about the trials and tribulations of turning 40 and just getting through life. So check it out on iTunes, Google Play Music, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Now go give someone a mouth hug. Bastard. So, like, maybe we were switched at birth or something. I don't know. Or, or I got a twin out there. Yeah. Twin separated at birth. You have a voice twin of Kevin Smith. You sound just like That's a good like point. Him. I didn't think about that until you said it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Now I can't hear anything but that. That's all I hear. I want to hear you talk about Batman for a half hour now. Maybe I should call his bank. Yeah, I'd like to make a withdrawal if I can. <laughs> you totally could. I want you to do a voicemail for me on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys say I sound like Jason Mewes, I am out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So for our listeners, if this is the first time you listen to the Twisted Ten, what we do here is we we create a top ten list, a unique top ten list. We don't steal it from the website from any website anywhere. Uh, we create a unique top ten list and we break it down. We put it into a hot pocket 
And then we heat it up for about a minute, 42 seconds. I this isn't kinky too, yet, by the way. I no. love tax and then we, <laughs> And then we take a bite of it, and then you run to the emergency room to create for, you know, to treat for third degree burns. <laughs> and then we discuss it, and we break it down, and then we uh, purge it back up, and then eat it again. And then we, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting lost now. It's close enough. So then we break it down, we talk about the top 10 list, and we have a good time, and that's what we do here on the Twisted 10. You got it. And occasionally guests. Can you 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 repeat that? I wasn't. I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. So what we do here. (laughs) (laughs) The The, hot pocket. Tack, this is where those edit skills come in. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's a good thing we do that. (laughs) Wink, wink. Wait a second. Um, Nobody said anything about homework here. What's going on? (laughs) (laughs) That's one thing that we've noticed with some of our guest hosts. Uh, After they said, yeah, we would love to be a a guest host of the Twisted Ten. Then they realized, of course, with your show, you guys know how much research goes into some of the topics you guys talk about. But uh, some of our guest hosts didn't know that it's a lot of work to find 10 things in a particular category and then to expound on all of them. That's not an easy task. Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's a very valid point. One that we're not terribly familiar with because we refuse to go past the first page of Google. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's another page. <laughs> well, and also our topic for this evening is going to be government conspiracies. And as you well know, it's hard to find Ooh. 10 U.S. government conspiracies. I mean, they're on the up and up at all times. So <laughs> we had to they do, our, do anything untoward. We had to do a lot of Internet sleuthing just to come up with 10 things that even anyone disagrees with with the government, <laughs> let alone conspiracies. <laughs> So what's the actual name of the list tonight? The name of the list tonight, Top 10 Government-Related Conspiracies. Oh. U.S. government or world governments throughout the world? <laughs> so the government oh. is either purported to be or admittedly involved in each one of these. But is, is this like any government, any country or United U.S. States government? government? Now, I'm not saying that if other governments... If you actually believe there's just one U.S. government. <laughs> 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 dun, dun, dun. <laughs> There's the New World Order. Long live the Lizard Kings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do they have our notes, Brent? What's I going know. on? <laughs> I've already ticked off like three of our items. I'm right, a little so nervous. We wrote these notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are ready, take it away. I'm going to hand over the metaphorical keys, and you guys can feel free to take it away. All right. For uh, for number 10. Number 10. Numero 10. 10. Ah, ah, ah. We are, uh, we are going to start with... It was actually the topic of our very first episode. If you're going to listen to Hysteria 51, I would not try that one as your first one. Nonetheless, it was our first episode. Brent, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, number 10 is Operation High Jump. So it was officially titled the United States Navy Antarctic Development Program 1946-1947. It rolls right off the tongue. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) It was the United States Navy operation organized by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd Jr. Uh, the operation began when Marines in full battle gear went by the went or sent by the United States to Antarctica on what was described as a training mission. The expedition was filmed by the Navy and then brought back to Hollywood and made into a film called The Secret Land. So Wasn't many that indi- a sequel to Narnia. Yeah, right. <laughs> so many individuals <laughs> question why an expedition to Antarctica was even going to take place at that time. Because if you remember, we had just gotten out of World War II and so much manpower and military equipment and money they were spending just to take people down there. So many believe Admiral Byrd was actually sent there to lead this operation to look for coal, oil, or even uranium because at that time, Antarctica was a completely untapped resource. Well, and we had just used a little bit of our uranium on... on yeah, uh, enriched uranium. In, yeah, yeah. Don't enriched, church it up. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so that was actually called off much earlier than expected, and the unofficial sources claim that Bird and his forces encountered heavy resistance uh, when they got to Antarctica by flying saucers. Now, these aren't just any flying saucers. Whoa. These are flying no. saucers with swastikas. Swastikas on the side. And right, right, right. aliens piloting them. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, these are the uh, the Nazi uh, flying saucers. They, the yeah. Nordics, or no, I'm sorry, the Aryans. And they, they purportedly, he actually flew over Antarctica, bird himself in a plane, went into the... Middle Earth, because as we all know, kids, the Earth is hollow and it's inhabited by other beings who are these Aryans. <laughs> and the entrance to said hollow Earth is where? It's in Antarctica. That's a given. Yes, we all know that. <laughs> Middle Earth is like where Gandalf lives, right? Yeah, Gandalf and <laughs> a whole bunch of Nazis. Yeah. Just, just making sure. <laughs> now, uh, now, trying to separate the the paranormal aspect from the 
um, the out there aspect, there really is a lot of speculation and maybe even some proof out there that we really were hunting Nazis in Antarctica. Yeah, we, that, did, that, we did believe that they had a base there. That they had put together a secret Nazi base and, and kind of like, a, you know, how even into like the 70s, they were finding like j- random Japanese soldiers in like bunkers and places. <laughs> what, what do you mean, do you mean the, the war's war over? Is over? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sounded just like that, too. <laughs> yes. Perfect accent. Um, I remember hearing something about like a, a cave that was captured on a, f- a photo in so Antarctica. So that cave supposedly is what Bird himself flew into. And when he got in there, all of a sudden it was a tropical climate. This is what the the conspiracy theorists say. He saw mammoths, like woolly mammoths and prehistoric beasts. And all of a sudden he lost control of his plane and he was taken over by Nazi flying saucers who flew him to their leader. And the leader said, hey, listen, we need you to work with us. We're going to help you out, but you got to do what we say. He was released, went back to the president, and the president was like, screw them. No dice. We want nothing to do with them. We'll take them over. Oh, wow. And that's how Scientology was born. <laughs> America. <laughs> America. 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 Just saying. The, 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 and the real strange part about this whole thing, uh, taking speculation away, is that we set out to be there for a long period of time and turned around and hightailed it home in less than two weeks. And there was casualties. and Lots and lots of deaths. We had lost planes and other boats. So something went down, probably. Either that or we just hit some Titanic-style icebergs. and <laughs> or, or, or some government official somewhere was saying, all right, how do we make a story that's believable for all these people that have died in other ways that are worse than the story that we can come yeah. up with. We really <laughs> fucked up. What can we do yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have fornicated the canine. We have fornicated the canine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So moving on to number nine. Number, number nine. nine. Ah. We've got the John F. Kennedy assassination. Oh, Ooh, shit. Yeah. It's about that, John. Well, as, as, as most of your listeners, I'm sure, know, November 22nd, 1963, John F. Kennedy was da- uh, gunned down in Dallas, Dealey Plaza. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested with a 6.5 millimeter man liquor Carcano. 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 I always mess that up. Which I <laughs> didn't set this one up, though. You can't blame me for this one. This is true. This is true. These uh, We do have some guest hosts, plural, our second time Ooh. on the show where we actually have two, get, two guest hosts. Um, and... Today we have the boys from Hysteria 51 podcast. Uh, we have uh, yeah. Mr. Brent Hand and John Goforth. Yes. Two guests, the half the funny, so you're in luck. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a pretty unique podcast. This is Adam. Uh, you guys have a pretty unique podcast. So I listened to a couple of episodes. Uh, the, I listened to the entire episode of the most recent one, which is part two of uh, what's the murderer? Jack yeah, the Jack Ripper. the Ripper. Thank yeah. you. Not to be uh, confused with Jack Tripper. Yeah. Yes. yeah, not to be confused. <laughs> Come on, knock on my door. That cracked me up when I heard that on the, on the episode. <laughs> or should he be confused with? It? <laughs> so, uh, just tell a little bit of our listeners, like what your show is all about. Well, uh, Hysteria Fifty One. We take a, uh, uh, I'd say, a skeptical look at the paranormal, the supernatural, the mysterious, and the unexplained. We're generally drinking during the show, and uh, like you mentioned, Brent's a host, I'm a host, and the third host, who's not with us tonight, is a cranky cranky robot that Brent built from old computer parts, car parts, named Conspiracy Bot, and he's bent on killing us, one, world domination, two, and putting out a good podcast, three, probably in that order. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Because Peppered in with lots of drinking. Yeah. <laughs> On his part. You guys, you guys are ridiculously quick witted. I was listening to the show and I mean, there's a ton of comedy. Thanks. I don't know what to say to that. Oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm blushing. It's, it's I'm impressive. blushing. <laughs> Tack hosts another show called You're 40 Now What with a, a friend of ours named Ron. And he's, he's about the, well, I guess Jay is too. He's pretty quick. The, the quick wittedness that you guys have is really appreciated by guys like that that can, well, maybe and girls too. I don't know. But they can come back with those funny puns that quick, and you guys are punny, I appreciate punny, that, punny. and you know what helps too. We've known each other for like thirty years, so uh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I know all his jokes. I've heard them all, <laughs> so I know what he's gonna say, and it's not usually. You uh, know, the other thing that helps 
editing. Yeah. Lots and lots of editing. <laughs> hey, remember that thing you said three days ago? I finally got a comeback. Can we record that? Yeah. Just edit it in. <laughs> Slip that one right in. <laughs> oh, nice. Hey, uh, also, uh, Brent, I don't know if anybody's told you this, but I've been noticing it since the very first episode I listened to. Are you aware that you're a voice twin to Kevin Smith? No, I've never been told that. Nobody's told you that? No. You sound oh my just God, like yes. I'm yeah, also absolutely. a fat... Hey guys, it's Adam. I want to take a moment and personally thank you for listening to our shows, for downloading our shows, and for sharing them with your friends. With your guys' support, we just moved the Twisted 10 into the threshold of the top 100 comedy shows in iTunes. It made it a number 99. Granted, just barely crept in there. However, that's still monumental for us. Out of the tens of thousands of podcasts that are out there, that's one of the most difficult categories to breach into. Thank you very, very much for helping us to get there. If you haven't already done so, please go give us a five-star rating and give us a review, a short little one-line, two-line review, letting us know that you enjoy the show. iTunes reviews are like podcast currency. It legitifies the show. It allows us to get better guests, and it allows our sponsors to really see that we're reaching the listeners that are out there. If you haven't done so yet, please go do it. We would greatly appreciate it. We've got a ton on the horizon from Dichotomy Media, another podcast you're going to hear a little bit about during this episode, a lot more on our YouTube channel, more Get Out Penny cartoons, all sorts of stuff. So please help us by giving us that five-star rating and a little review. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and lift off. One, two, three, four. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique post-created top ten lists recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. Okay, and welcome to another. In I can't think of a good word. God man. damn it, Tech! You Sorry. had one job. I know. I can't. Okay, welcome to another. I'm just gonna say episode. Episode of the Twisted Ten. Uh, this episode. What's that? A piss episode. A piss episode. There we go. Wow. Episode. Episode. Welcome episode, to episode. another piss episode of the Twisted Ten. After Woo-hoo. this, can we have some pisketti? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> And uh, my name is Tack, and I am not one of the hosts today, Adam. Oh, neither am I. As a matter of fact, I am not a host this week either. You're not. No. So again, again, again. It's supposed to be my week again, but no. No, of course oh, we not. We look to the Lady Chase. And oh. this is not my show. Who are you? Not Andrea Joy's show. <laughs> and so it must be Jay. Uh, I am Jay Alvarez. Uh, I am also not hosting. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, apparently we've got another uh, another guest. That's right. Shocking, uh, uh, Adam. Another fucking guest. I don't no, even know not. why we do this anymore. Wait why do we even show up? I-